as best as we can in lockdown. Thank you, Helen, or whoever's re pressed record. It was me. Okay, welcome. Well, today we decided to do a healthy options demonstration. You've all seen that we can bake cakes, uh, curries, all of those sorts of things. But we thought heading into spring, the sun, maybe not today, but the sun is going to start to appear. And that means barbecues and outside entertaining. So we thought we would do some really healthy options that will help you in those areas. And these meals today are all super quick, really, really quick things that you can do. Um, so what we're going to do, I will mention that if there is anyone at the end of the session that would like to purchase a Thermomix, um, we can more than happily go through that. So hang around at the end if you do want to talk more, or maybe you're not 100% sure and you have some questions and we can ask you um, or answer those questions for you. So I'm going to actually start today and do my dish to begin with, which is the pesto spaghetti with roasted pumpkin. It is an absolutely beautiful dish, really fresh, really easy, and there's quite a few variations that you can do with this particular one. For those of you that know Sam Woods, this is his recipe. He was our ambassador for a while and he has created quite a few collections or quite a few recipes for us on his Sam Woods 28 Days um, collection on Cookadoo. So if you haven't seen that and you like Sam Woods, check it out. Uh, really great recipes there and um, yeah, give it a go. So I'm going to point you round to my Thermomix. Here we go. And today we are going to be doing the, I've saved it in my week, which you can do on Cookadoo and especially with your TM6. And these are all the recipes that we're cooking today, but I have it here. So pesto spaghetti with roast pumpkin. So I'm just gonna press start on there. I've already got all the ingredients as you know. So we're going to press start cooking. The first thing with this recipe is we are gonna roast, it is roasted pumpkin. So we are gonna use our oven as well today. Um, so it does ask you to preheat the oven to 180 degrees, which I've already done. And line a baking tray 30 by 40 with baking paper and set aside. I've actually used my baking um, oven mat, which I will show you a bit later on down the track. So the first thing we're going to add in is four garlic cloves. So we're starting to make the pesto. Oh, no, we're not. We are going to do the pumpkin and I'm going to explain because I've actually cheated and I've already made the pumpkin but I'm going to do this as well so we've got our garlic cloves in there and pop the lid on and hit next and we're just going to chop them up so you've just taken the skins off them and feed seven three seconds Now it does say to scrape down the mixing bowl. I'm going to show you how well that has chopped those onions. Now, when we talk about, um, you know, other machines like the normal blenders and things like that, they don't chop as evenly. And the reason being is if you see these lines in the Thermomix, it actually, the way it's been designed is to throw the food around evenly. So that's why it cuts so beautifully. So you can scrape that down if you want to. I'm choosing not to, and we're going to hit next. Then we're gonna add in 30 grams of olive oil. Now, I just thought I'd give you a tip here, guys. This is also how I um, coat my homemade chips that I make. So if you're making French fries, chop up your potatoes, and this is exactly what I do as well. And then I'll add some onion salt, garlic salt, um, those sorts of things. But it's a really good way rather than putting them in a bowl and, you know, mixing it all up that way or in a plastic bag and shaking it. Um, this is another way that you can coat your chips. Or if you're making roasted potatoes, great way to flavour them before you pop them in the oven. So we've added in our oil and we're going to add now 
This is for the roasted pumpkin, 400 to 450 grams of pumpkin cut into pieces, about two to three centimetres. I've already done that and I've roasted it just to save time today. Um, but I'm making another dish on the side. So what I'm putting in here this time is the sweet potato. So same size as how I cut up the um, pumpkin but I'm actually going to roast this as well. And I'm going to make a sweet potato dip. So I'm just gonna blitz it all at the end once I've roasted this, and I'm going to add in cashews, some Parmesan, a bit more oil, um, and it's just gonna have a lovely flavor. And it's just a great, you can use it um, in pastas as the sauce, or you can use it as a beautiful dip. So we'll pop that in. So four to 500 grams. And hit next, pop that lid on. Now you see the next step, it's actually, and I don't think you can see very well today, it's a bit glary. It all depends on the light on the day. I'll just turn that on, see if no, it does make a difference. Um, but it's actually going on reverse now. So there's a blunt side of the blades and a sharp side. So this is going to turn it all around and coat it with the olive oil and the garlic without chopping it up. So it's only going to go for five seconds. And we go just one and a half. Okay. Now, as you can see here, this is all beautifully coated with the garlic. So you just need to spill it onto your baking tray, which you don't need to watch me do, but I'll just quickly do that over here. And they're all covered beautifully with that garlic. And then we're coming back to here. And without cleaning the mixing bowl, because you still want all those beautiful flavors in there. We're going to hit next. And we're going to put in our Parmesan, which Real Kitchens, I forgot to get out of the fridge. Two seconds. So when chopping Parmesan cheese, just make sure it's no bigger than an ice block. So that's the general rule. So I've just done it sort of this size because it is quite hard and you never want to damage your blades. Um, so we'll put in about 50 grams and we're making the pesto part of this now. And two more garlic cloves. So we're popping them in. I've only got one left, so that's going to have to do. And I know that there's plenty of garlic in there anyway. And we're going to do that for five seconds to speed seven. And this time I will scrape down the sides, but you can see that that's chopped it up beautifully. And we've got the base of our pesto sauce. This is just so easy, guys. I really want you to, if you are into a pesto-style pesto dish, to give this one a go, Sam Wood's collection. And hit next. And now we're going to add in 40 grams of fresh basil leaves. Now, when we're making pesto, I'm really slack here. Um, and it does say leaves only, but, you know, I still have a bit of the stem there because we're making pesto, so it doesn't really matter. It's all about the flavour but we'll put the 40 grams in. And basil is really, really good for you. So we love the fresh pesto. And then we hit next, and we're gonna put in 100 grams of fresh baby spinach. So once again, basil is quite expensive and it goes off quite quickly. So if you didn't have the full 40 grams, you could just make it up with fresh baby spinach, which is what I, often do. So 100 grams of that into your Thermomix. Please shout out, as we've only got a small group today, if you have any questions, feel free to take yourself off mute and ask. Now we did use um, some of that spinach for lunch, so there's only 80 grams in there, but that's okay. Let's hit next. One lemon juice only. Now what I do is when lemons are in abundance, I freeze mine into ice blocks and pop them in the fridge. 
and then just take them out a little bit before I've got to use it. So then I've always got fresh lemon juice on hand and we'll pop that in as well. Kit next and 20 grams of olive oil. Remembering that um, the differences between the machines is the TM6 weighs in one gram increments. So it is super precise. So I set those scales back and pop in your 20 grams of oil. If you can pour it properly. Not doing too well there, am I? There we go. All right, next. Got to add salt. Now, I used to be a bit hesitant in adding salt, but it really does bring out the flavour of the ingredients that you put in. So if it does ask for salt, do so. Another little tip is those of you that make the veggie stock paste, if you're cooking a dish and it asks for salt, you can pop the veggie stock paste in because it just gives it a big flavour boost and the salt as well. Hit next. And then we're just going to pop the lid on. And we're going to chop that up for five seconds, round on speed seven. Okay. At this stage, depending on how you like it, you can keep blending if you want to. I don't think there's any need. If you wanted to add pine nuts in, um, you could add pine nuts in, but we're not in this particular recipe. I'm just going to scrape that down and show you. And this smells absolutely gorgeous. The bevel, even the oil I can smell. So here we go. Now, you can't get fresher than that. If any of you follow me on my um, page, Autumn's Thermy, I recently did a comparison of the um, purchased uh, basil uh, pesto and this one and the difference in colour. So when you put them side by side, it's quite off-putting the one that you buy in a jar when you know you can make it so easily yourself and it's such a vibrant, beautiful colour there. Um, so you can repeat the blending if needed, but we're not going to because we can see that that's fine. So I'm just going to pop that into a dish. Yum, this is looking gorgeous. And I'll just show you in the bowl what it looks like. Isn't it lovely? Beautiful, fresh pesto. Really good for you. And how quick. So easy. Now the next step is to rinse the bowl. We'll do that. And there we go. Now it does say to dry it. Mm, oh, no, it doesn't. But if it does... If you're using wet ingredients next time, like straight after, don't bother drying it, waste of time. And if you've also, if you're cooking and there's not much in there um, with your leftovers of what you've just put in there and it's going to be in the flavours of the main dish, don't even bother washing your bowl. No need. All right. So the next step is to put in uh, 1,500 grams of water. Now, if you wanted to speed up this process, there's oh, you can put in boiling water. I have already boiled this kettle. If you have a TM6, it's got a kettle mode on it. So you could set it to whatever temperature you wanted and put it on kettle mode. But what we're going to do here is just hit next and pop on the lid. We're going to get that up to 120 degrees. So we'll take about 10 minutes and um, we're going to have it just on speed one. So pop the lid on. As I said, you could use the kettle mode. I will quickly show you for those that don't have the TM6, if we go out, when, you, when I'm talking about modes and you go, what's she talking about? So if we go into, and I don't think you could even see it here, but these are the modes. So we've got pre-clean, we've got egg boiler, which is really cool. You just put in your eggs, the blades don't move, cover them with water, and then you choose, do you want it um, runny, 
hard boiled, extra hard boiled, um, and it will cook for you just perfect every single time. Uh, we've got our scales, our dough turbo, great for mincing meat, crushing ice, those sorts of things. And we've got blend. We've got the kettle mode here. We've got warm up, thicken, great for bechamel sauce, hollandaise sauce, all those sorts of things. We've got a rice cooker, fermentation mode, which we will talk about a bit later, and the slow cook, which we absolutely love. And that is a unique feature of the TM6. But I'm just going to go back to my recipe. And we're going to go for 10 minutes. So I'm just going to turn the dial. It does say that the next step is to prepare one bunch of asparagus by trimming and cutting it into about thirds because you want that to go through your salad and also cutting 200 grams of cherry tomatoes into halves. So I can do that whilst we continue. But now I'm going to head over to the lovely Helen. So I'm just going to spotlight Helen. Here we go. And what are you going to cook for us today, Helen? Uh, hi, welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to cook the couscous tahini bowl. Sorry, I had to have a quick look. <laughs> Forgot what I was cooking. So um, looking at this recipe, it looks like there's lots of ingredients, but once you start preparing it all, it actually really is really quick to do because most of these ingredients all go in at once. So basically I've just popped them all into one bowl. But let's start cooking and I'll talk about it as we go along. So what we first need to do is place a thermo server bowl or any other bowl onto the lid. I'm going to use my 2.6 litre thermo server. We're going to weigh into it 150 grams of couscous. Now, I popped it in the top. My scales are all built in and they weigh in one gram increment. Got a little bit too much in there, but that's fine. If your scales aren't at zero, there's a little button down there. You can just tear it back to zero and then start weighing in your ingredients. Oops, went too far. So I can always just go back. Now it's telling me just to set it aside. Pressing next. Place 450 grams of water. So the lid obviously weighs something. So now it's gone minus 250. So I'll just press tear to go back to zero. 450 grams of water. Next, two teaspoons of vegetable stock paste. Next, insert the simmering basket. Place 100 grams of beetroot peeled cut into one centimeter cube. So you're using a raw beetroot, peeled it, and I've cut it into one centimeter cubes. I love the fresh raw um, beetroot. It's beautiful and bright red. But you do have to wear gloves when um, peeling it, otherwise you'll get red hands. Great tip there, Helen. Definitely wear <laughs> gloves. <laughs> Definitely. So that was my, I've got a little bit extra there, but that was just one piece of beetroot. They were only, uh, that one piece um, for 125 grams, it cost me 85 cents. So buying fresh is a lot cheaper than buying even the cryo pack bag. The fresh cry pack bag at the um, supermarket was still like $3 and you get four little um, beetroots. So that was actually a really good price. Press the next button. We're going to place the Verona dish on top. So it just sits on the top like that. And into that, I'm going to put 200 grams of sweet potato. Now I know this is not 200 grams. Not everyone in this household is a fan, so. That's fine. So it's only and 140. That's the beauty so. of it too, because it's guided cooking, isn't it, Helen? So you don't yeah. have to follow it. No, exactly. So I'm probably really the only one that'll eat this, so I don't want too much of it. Next. Uh, now, it says 150 grams of broccoli broken into small pieces, but I'm going to use broccolini, and because it's a lot finer than broccoli, 
Um, I'm going to probably wait and put this in a bit later. Otherwise it will just cook, cook too long. So we're going to put the lid on. Oh, so all I've done, I put, put my um, potato in, but what you want to do is make sure that you don't cover all the holes so that the steam can come through. So you just, I've just, can you see? Yeah, so just making sure that you've got a bit of steam holes available there. Pop the lid on. Now it's going to cook for 16 minutes. So it's cooking the couscous and the potato. And if I had um, broccoli in the top as well. So 16 minutes at Varoma temperature and it's telling me to turn the selector dial to speed one. So I'll do that. And then round about halfway through, I'll quickly just put my broccolini in as well so that then that can cook too. And I think we're going to go over to Christine now, Kirsten. Yes, we are, but I'd just like to quickly mention here, when you're cooking in the Varoma, um, I often say to people, if your things aren't cooking properly, that was a fantastic tip that Helen gave there. So just make sure that you do create some space to allow the steam to flow up. The other thing is that you can turn your, your um, speed up to anywhere up to about four if you wanted to. The higher you go, you wouldn't go more than four with Varoma, but the higher you go, the more the steam is going to come up. So if you're finding that your food isn't cooking, perhaps turn it up a little bit more to maybe try two and a half, three, um, maximum of four, and that way it will create more steam and allow your food to cook a bit better. But let's cross over to the lovely Christine. Me. There we are. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing two dishes today. I'm not sure if you can see my little sign in the background. We're going to start with some simple granola today. And I've never actually start, done these dishes before. So I love, I have read through them, but I do love the easy guiding that you get with Cookadoo on the TM6 because, well, I'm just dreadful and I'm messy with recipes that are separate. So we'll start with simple granola. And we're starting to cook. It's asked me to preheat the oven. That's been going for a little while. Line a couple of baking trays with baking paper. I'm just going to do one. Full disclosure, I actually have one of those um, baking mats that Kerr was talking about before. But um, it's actually a bit bigger than this tray. So this morning when I was reading through the recipe, I actually thought I need another one. So I jumped on the mix. And I've ordered a medium size that will fit perfectly in that baking tray. But sadly, it's not going to get here now. Uh, so we're just using a bit of baking paper. Now, I'm going to take my lid off. And I do love the, um, the measuring of this. I have This is the only one I've pre-measured today. The rest are coming straight out of the bowl. So some mixed whole nuts. I've just got almonds and cashews. 100 grams. In we go. Next, we're going to put a measuring cup, which was already in my lid, on the top. And next, well, let's create some noise. Three seconds at speed five. There we go. My kids. It's a good way to get the kids out of the kitchen. Make some noise. Mine go running a mile. It's great. Now, I'm going to take the lid off again. I'm going to take the weights back to zero. And we need 300 grams of rolled oats. So, let's. Near enough is good enough. 302 grams, love it. Next, 80 grams of mixed seeds, sunflower. I actually um, grabbed this macro bag, which was perfect. Sunflower, this one's pepitas and sunflower. It's all much, much less. Put in what you want, what your flavors are, what kind of nuts and seeds that you have in the cupboard. This is something that you can put as much or as little in as you like. I'm going to stick to the recipe just today. Oh, 80. We're going up to 80. Oh, 86. There you go. 
And next, 100 grams of dried fruit, something, raisins. Uh, I grabbed a mixed bag today. And I can get a muscle <laughs> <laughs> Christine did open it before. Interesting. You don't want to expose it again. <laughs> All right, that's where the scissors are coming. What happened with that? Oh. So just chat amongst yourselves while I struggle to open the back. There we go. No, we're, we're so being annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love the faces? Okay. 100 grand. Here we go. Hundred and ten. Yeah, close enough. I'm not gonna zip it up again. I'll never get it open again. Hundred and twenty to one hundred and sixty grams of maple syrup or honey. So I had both in the cupboard. So we're gonna go with maple syrup. Yum. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll go somewhere in between. One hundred and thirty-seven looks about right to me. Next. Let's pop the lid on and we're going to do 10 seconds. It's on that reverse that Kerr was talking about before and we're going to go up to speed three and a half. So effectively, it's just going to be mixing all those goodness together and making it all sticky with the maple syrup. And for those of you that have purchased um, mueslis and, and similar recipes like this from the supermarket, you would know that um, they are super expensive. So to make it yourself and make exactly what you want in there is, um, you know, it's a real money saver. It definitely is. So I'm just going to spread this out evenly on the tray, pop it in the oven and bake for 15 to 20 minutes. It's asking me to stir it every five minutes. So I'll see you guys in 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And we're heading back to me. <laughs> um, okay, so it has got up to the temperature that it needs to get up to, and we're going to put the spaghetti in now. So there's a couple of options here. If you're someone who doesn't want the high carb of this, you could use your zoodles. Now, if you don't have one of those zoodle machines, um, I found one of these at one of the kitchen stores and I'm sure if you had a look on the mix shop, they would have, I know they have a Zoodle machine on there, um, but I'm sure they'd have something similar. So all you have to do with that, and you could use a ThermoServe, just pop it in um, water and blanch it, hot water and just blanch it. But you just run this through and then you get these beautiful spaghetti style um, pieces of zucchini. And I've just turned my stove top on that's not good um so you get these beautiful yeah so you could use them instead of your spaghetti but my family don't like it so we are going with the spaghetti option so it says here 220 grams of dried spaghetti wholemeal or spelt we're just going with your normal style here so all you need to do is pop this in oh. Easy. So we'll just set our scales back to zero and we're going to pop it in just like so. There we go. I've done a bit more. We'll take a bit out. No, we won't. That's about right. And we're going to hit next. And without the measuring cup, you don't want to break it. Um, we just want that slowly to cook down into there. And we just hit next and it's going to go on reverse so it doesn't chop up that spaghetti. And we're just going to lightly move that around. So just on the softest speed. And it's going to cook for um, about nine minutes. So that's that. Now what I want to show you is the other part. So I'm just going to move you around here. So here you can see I've prepared the asparagus. So I've just chopped it up. And we've got that beautiful pumpkin, which is now roasted and it's got the beautiful garlic all over it. It's absolutely lovely. And I've got my cherry tomatoes as well, which I have done there. So someone asked just before that I did read and they said they can't find the recipe for the simple granola on Cookadoo. Um, please reach out to your consultant and ask them how to change your filters because when you purchase your Thermomix, it is an Australian machine, 
therefore your normal default is Australia. However, you can open your filters up and you can open them up permanently now. So all the um, English speaking countries come up as well. So it just makes you have so many more recipes. So you can choose Canada, US, um, can't think of oh, the UK. And so you can have all of those come up in your searches every single time. Um, so, or you can hang around at the end and we can quickly show you. I think it was Sue that asked. Um, but so we're going to pop that back into the oven for about eight minutes. So I'll just do that. And then who are we going to next, guys? Is that all I was showing now? We're all a bit yep. blasé to Wendy. Today. It's <laughs> okay. me. It's Wendy. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, Wendy here. I'm going to make a really quick nutritious salad for you all. Um, I know you say, well, with the Thermomix salads, it's not gonna cook. No, we're not cooking this one, but there are some salads that you can have on heat and you can make them. Um, I'm just gonna grab my laptop. With um, Cooker Do, as you can see here, I've arranged my meals for the week, but if I go to my recipes, and this is what Kurt said about the collections on Cookadoo too. So I opened up my filters. I've made my own little um, menu box called 5A Salads. That's a, so it stays at the top of my um, bookmarks there. And you can see a range of different salads that I've made um, from quinoa salad, which obviously the Thermomix will help cook with. This one, we had chili with tartar potato salad in the week. That was beautiful. And um, so it just offers you so many different options and so much quicker than having to chop all the ingredients or to think I'm cooking steak tonight what can I make that's quick and easy and healthy and um, to go with it there's so many salads on there with the barbecue cookbook I think there's a, over 15 salads so there's a huge variety of salads in the summer mix range so I'm going to go back to the detox salad which we're doing today and basically not many ingredients but really healthy nutritious ones so we're going to play start. Bear with me, I cheated a little bit and went ahead before. And it's asking for 200 grams of broccoli florets. So I've just, as you can see, I haven't really chopped them. I'm just breaking them up a little bit more. Just placing them in there. And then we're going to go for 140 grams of red cabbage. If you don't have red cabbage in, you can just use normal cabbage. It doesn't have to be exactly what it says. As Kerr said, it's just guided cooking here. We can actually change the ingredients as we go along. And um, 50 grams of red onions. I just cut that into half and then quarter. And 50 grams of red capsicum. And that's it. Then basically, I'm going to make some noise, put the lid on. Put the measuring cup in, click next. And it's gonna go for six seconds on speed four. Now, if you do find when you're making the salad that you do like it a little bit finer, you are able to reverse that step and go back and do it a little bit more. But I think this looks actually quite nice and chunky there. And um, you can, as I say, do it a little bit finer, um, but that's one quick salad. And then I'll be doing the salad dressing, which I'm going to be um, doing in about five minutes. And then basically that's it. How quick, so easy for a nutritious salad to go with your steak or chicken. All good. <laughs> okay, back to you, Kerr. You're on mute, Kerr. Maybe not. <laughs> yes, no, I was chatting With, away yeah. and I was on mute. I was just yeah. saying, Wendy, how beautiful that looks. It's just a really pretty, um, a really pretty dish, really lovely. Yeah. So I can't wait to see the yeah. um, end result. Um, yeah. I think we are going to, are we go going to me or no? But what I will say is for those of you that are new to Thermomix or considering purchasing a Thermomix, the whole uh, spring and salads and all of that. This month's offer, we've got the bundle. So for $49, you can get a meter 
which is one of these. Now, what is it? If you insert this into your meat up to about there and it will cook it, it will tell you when it's done. So you hook it up to your phone and it will tell you when the meat is perfect on the inside. It will tell you what temperature you need to take it out of the oven. Then it will tell you that it needs to rest and it will keep on monitoring it and your phone just will beep when it's ready to serve. So think of Christmas, all those, um, you know, big roasts or barbecues that you're having and, you know, there's no guesswork. Your meat will be perfectly cooked. So it's a perfect companion with your Thermomix. You can create all the marinades and things like that. So this normally retails for $1.99, but if you purchase a Thermomix this month, you get this for $49 plus the barbecue cookbook, which has um, it has like 13 salads in it. So even if you're vegetarian, it's got some wonderful salads in it. You get that and you also get these. Now, these are the barbecue skewers and they're absolutely fantastic. They're really sturdy and... They've got a little cap for protection on the end that you can take off when you're cooking. But this is what I love, right? So you know when you've got them on and you try and get your food off, well, you just slide these down and it pushes your meat off or your vegetables, whatever you're putting on there, and then it just sits back like that. And, um, yeah, they're fantastic. So you get them as well. So a cookbook, your meter, and these for $49 with the purchase of your Thermomix this month. Um, now, when I was talking about the oven mat, I did put it back into the oven before I got to talk about it, but that's for if you have a cooking experience of your own. I don't even want to call it a cooking experience. I want to call it just watching together, cooking, inviting a couple of friends, having a wine, having a cup of tea, in your PJs, whatever that may be, um, but you can get discounted oven mats, discounted thermo serves, so reach out to your consultant because We've got some really good stuff going on at the moment. And I think who are we up to next? We are back to the lovely Helen. So I'm going to... Perfect timing because it's just finished. Awesome. So let's press next. Thank you for all that talking because it literally just finished. No worries. So now we have to remove the Varoma and set it aside. So... All I'm going to do is lift it down onto the little tray I have here, but I'll just show you what you need to do when you're using your Varoma. If you're going to lift the lid, always lift it away from you so the steam goes towards the back. I'll just let the water drip into the bowl. You can use the lid like a trivet. So you can just pop it down like that. But because we're setting this aside, I'm just going to leave my lid on it and just bring it down here and put that aside. So now we're going to remove the simmering basket with the aid of my spatula. So the spatula has a little hook. Let me just press that. The spatula has a little hook, which I'll hook into my basket to lift it out. You can sit your basket up to let it drain if you think it needs draining, but I don't think this one does, no. I'm just going to sit that down. That's my beautiful beetroot. Set that aside. Now, transfer the cooking liquid into a jug. So I'm going to use my thermal jug. This is a medium-sized thermal jug. I'm going to just pour that into there. Wow, look how red that is. And this is going to become my sauce for later, which we're just about to do. Place a thermal, uh, thermal serving bowl or other bowl with the couscous onto the lid. So I'll put that back on there. Put my couscous bowl back there. And put 180 grams of this liquid into the couscous. Sorry, I had water on there. I couldn't see my scales. There we go. And then we're going to keep the rest of that. So stir with the spatula to combine, cover, 
and set it aside for five minutes. So just make sure it's all incorporated. So that's all it looks like. and set aside. Now, reserved the remaining liquid. Now this next step, there's quite a few ingredients, but I've put them all together into one bowl. So I'll just quickly go through them. I've got in this bowl, I have 100 grams of tahini, 20 grams of lemon juice, 10 grams of sesame oil, half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, 20 grams of honey, I'll pop all that in there. I love that I didn't have to clean my bowl at all. It's all just using the same things that were already in there. It's just added flavor. And for those that love the um, poke bowls, it's, um, they've got some, this is from the collection, which is called uh, nourishing bowls on Cookadoo. And they've got some really, really lovely recipes in there. So I personally have tried the hoisin pork um, nourishing bowl and it is just divine. So have a look on that collection too, guys, if you love these sorts of poke bowls. Okay, there was also 150 grams of Greek style natural yogurt and then the rest of the cooking liquid. <laughs> Insert the lid. My MC. Next. So for 15 seconds on speed three. I now need to just season that with salt and pepper. So this is what it looks like. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. So just season with some salt and pepper. I agree, Debbie. <laughs> what did she say? Yum. Yeah. I have made this before and it is quite yummy. And it. I mean, how easy is it? You can be a creative cook and tell the Thermomix what to do if you don't want to follow um, the steps. But as you can see, like Helen's just pre pressing next, next, next and following steps. You can pretty much cook anything you want uh, with the guided cooking because it, it does all the thinking and the guesswork for you. You just have to follow. If you can read, you can cook in the Thermomix. I'm just putting this back into my um, jug because I know that there's a lot of this and I'm not going to use it all on my dishes. So the rest of it can just stay in here until I want to make another one tomorrow and use the rest of it up. So now... Can you show us the jug, Helen? Sure. That's on the mix shop too, isn't it? Yes, this is the medium, style, the medium size. So they also have a large size now. So this medium size is $29.95. It's a 500 ml jug. The large jug is a 750ml and that's $34.95 in the mix shop. Thank you. So all that's going to happen next is I'm going to divide my couscous amongst my four bowls because this is for four people. And then my cooked vegetables, um, so within, within the bowl, I'll have my couscous, my cooked vegetables. Also, I'll have an avocado, an apple, chickpeas and some lime. But I'll put all that together and I'll show you what that looks like at the end. Super fresh. Um, yes. We're coming back to me now just because right. I'm quickly interrupting because I don't want my pasta to sit. So my pasta is ready now in here. So it has cooked beautifully. And I'll just show you how I drain the pasta. So I'm going to turn you around. So when you're cooking your pasta in your Thermomix, you can use your jug, I mean your steaming basket as the strainer. So you just hold that on top and then you can see all the liquids coming out. Oh, you probably can't see that wrong angle. I'll turn it around. There we go. 
So you can see all the liquids coming out and the spaghetti's all gonna stay in the bottom of my Thermomix. And then what I'm going to do, so there we go, that's beautifully drained. And then we've just got the spaghetti. So we're gonna pop that into our Thermoserve. So this is the oval one. If things don't, aren't coming out 100%, guys, just turn this dial here and you'll find, see how it kind of moves it, moves the blades around and that has come out. And I'm just gonna give that a little, you can see there's a little bit caught around the base. There we go. I'm gonna leave that little bit. There we go. And look at that, my spaghetti has been cooked beautifully. Now, what you wanna do with this part is add your flavor in. So we've got this beautiful green pesto and we're just gonna stir this in here. And mix that through while the spaghetti is warm because it will mix a lot better. And I'm just gonna put the lid on that and let it sit. So then when my vegetables are ready, but you can see already that's just going in there and it's just creating such a beautiful flavor. And really it's not rocket science, super simple, really healthy. And I'll show you here, look at that, yum. Anyway, we're going to head next to, um, we'll go either to Wendy or Christine, depending on who is ready next. So shout out girls. Oh, we will go, Chris, yep. I can okay. do, yep, because I'm, I've got my granola in for another five minutes. So I'm gonna, Jump ahead and let's do a little bit of mango, 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 muesli. Sorry, you're going to hear that in your head. You're going to hear <laughs> that all dancing. night now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, mango, mango, mango. Okay, first up, 40 grams of desiccated coconut. There we go. There we go. Oh, near enough is good enough. Again. And 40 grams of almonds. There we go. Making a lot today. And 40 grams of pitta dates. How can I just say, oh, learn something new today? I've been buying the really expensive pitta dates that you find in the, the veggie section, the, the you know, the, the grain veggie dates. Yep. Got them from the uh, nut section, like a third of the price. What was I thinking? Anyway, moving on. Okay. Uh, putting a bit too much, but there we go. Oh, that's perfect. And excuse me, off to the freezer to get my frozen mango, 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 mango. Let's see if I can get this one open. Okay. Yep, I got it. Okay. 260 grams of frozen mango. 200. And a navy, that'll do. And lid on with our cup in. Six seconds at speed six. Mango, mango, mango. That's going to send the children into another room for sure. Okay. And now I just get to build. Excuse me, I'm gonna get the yogurt. So I'm just gonna make a little, little one for now because what I'm going to do is actually keep this aside and give this as a fresh dish to the kids for breakfast tomorrow. Uh, I'll do a scoop. 
modeling it off the picture that's on cookie do because it's pretty so some greek yogurt which you can make in your thermomix for those of that course. are interested yes with the fermentation mode absolutely how good is that yeah so for those of you that don't have a tm6 uh, it does now have a fermentation mode. So you can cook your yogurt overnight. So it goes on for about 10 hours and it will keep on increasing it to about 70 degrees and then drop it back down, just keeping it warm enough um, to um, incubate overnight and then your yogurt's ready the next day. So whether you're dairy free, you could do the coconut yogurt or um, if you can eat dairy, you can make your own yogurt. There's heaps of recipes online as well so but this recipe i have made and the whole family love this one it is it's beautiful yeah it and looks, it looks pretty good too, too. <laughs> so there you have it can we see am i how gorgeous Yum. is that very pretty and since i've got your all, all your attention my chaos excuse me for a moment let's have a look at the granola Done. Can you see that they're really we, difficult for me to move? Actually. That's okay. We can see it. We know it's nice and hot, so you don't want to. Um, Extremely hot. So <sighs> the next step is to just let that cool. And then I'm going to, I'm going to actually put that in some jars and send that to the grannies and grandpas that can't come and visit us at the moment. Put a little ribbon around it and hopefully put a smile on a face. Oh, that's a beautiful idea. The homemade gifts are really special and important at the moment, and we can definitely do that in our Thermomix. Um, speaking of which, that reminds me. So um, we do, in a couple of weeks' time, we have a homemade gifts um, cooking session. So if any of you want to come to that, please reach out to your consultants and um, we'll have hopefully some really good ideas for you. But that looks really lovely. And I know that we pay big bucks for a breakfast like that at a cafe and we can't do that now. So we can still eat gourmet style at home with our Thermomix. Thanks for that, Chris. We are now gonna head over to the wonderful Wendy and she's gonna show us the dressing for her salad. Okay, here we go. So I will start. So I did add actually add one avocado slice and cubed to the top of the salad. And just resting that while we make the dressing. So it wants 50 grams of fat-free plain yogurt. I'm using full fat but lactose-free because we've got some dairy-free in our family. So again with the guided cooking you can just change it to be what you prefer as well. You don't always have to go by the rule book and that's added a little bit more yogurt than 50 but that's okay. And 15 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Just make sure you do cancel the tear back to zero before you do add new ingredients. There we go. And 20 grams of lemon juice, which I freshly squeezed a lemon earlier. Again, great tip with curve from if you do have an abundance of lemons to pre-freeze some of that juice for when you do need them. And then it's just going to go 10 seconds on speed seven. So it will get a little bit noisy. But the beauty of Zoom is that it quietens it down for us. <laughs> And I can see your vacuum in the back there, your little mini vac that you've got. Yes, my little mini vac, which is great for when I spill that flour or sugar around the machine. Um, and then it just says add um, some salt to, um, to taste. So you can see this is blended. I'll um, probably do that a couple of seconds more. I'll, I'll scrape the sides down a little bit, just because the yogurt has kind of exploded up the sides. Um, but one good thing with this is that um, you don't have to dress it as you have it now. Like if you wanted to do it for lunches at the beginning of the week, I just put the dressing in a separate little container and then it will do lunch at work for a couple of weeks. You could also um, pre-prep some shredded chicken and you could steam the chicken in the Varoma and then shred it um, and again have that bagged up in the fridge ready to go for it if you wanted to add that to any meals. And a good tip I learnt 
just actually yesterday was that a lot of people do the HelloFresh and everything and it's so expensive and not really that economical and it's meant to save time, but I believe they've just changed all their packaging again and people are having to group their own meals together. So it's been a little bit a harder work for them to do. But if you meal plan on Cookie Do on the TM6, you can actually do the online shopping. You can either click and collect or you can get it delivered to your home. And then what you can do is get some boxes and put them in your fridge at each meal you want to prepare for the week. So say if you're having um, teriyaki chicken and rice on Monday, you could actually have all those ingredients ready in a little box. You could label it if you wanted to. And that way anyone in your family could actually help and say, okay, what's for dinner? Grab the box out, press start on the menu on Cookie Do, And there you go. How good is that for time saving? <laughs> and um, so I love that, this. Wendy. So I'll address this for presentation and back to you, Kim. Thank you. You win for ideas there. I think we all just went, oh, love it, <laughs> love it, love it, love it. And it's a great way to get everyone involved as well. Um, another tip is what I do with my kids is go, okay, you don't eat my food, you can choose the meal plan. So get them to go through Cookadoo with you and, you know, get them to choose different foods that they like. So what I'm going to do now is the immune booster. So I don't know about you, whether it be that you've got a cold, we're getting out of the flu season now, or not COVID season, but, you know, whatever. Um, but we do, I, I need something to pick me up. So this is a great one. It's really quick, really easy. We have an abundance of lemons at the moment. Um, so this is what we're going to make. So I'll just bring you over to this one. And this is called the immune booster. So let's go. Start cooking. Two lem lemons, peeled, white pith removed, and pips. Now, tip here: the Thermomix blitzes everything so well, and we are straining it at the end. So I don't even bother taking the pips out. Um, you can if you want to, but I'm just chucking my lemons in. That one's whole. Um, and then these ones I have cut up because I had quite a few seeds in them. But really, I wouldn't worry. If you're making sorbets and things like that as well, don't worry about taking the pips out because it will blitz them. Um, we've got some beautiful fresh ginger, which is really, really good for us. And we're going to pop 20 grams of that in. So chuck that in. I've got nearly 30 grams. I love ginger. And our manuka honey. Now, Manuka honey is quite expensive. If you don't have that, any honey will do, but there are, um, you know, better benefits uh, with the Manuka honey. I'm lucky enough that my sister-in-law has her own beehive in her backyard. So we use her bee, um, her honey. And little tip that I found out about honey as well is if you have the honey from your area, so if we had a beehive out the back and you get... Um, you get hay fever. If you have that honey, you will build up a resistance to the flowers and the pollen around because you're eating the honey. Interesting fact, true fact. Anyway, so four tablespoons of honey or thereabouts. Pop that in. It's never a good one to do on screen because it goes everywhere. And 200 grams of water, chilled. Because you want it nice and cold to drink straight away. And I'm going to show you the rest of my salad in a sec. We're just going to pop the lid on. And we're going to turn that round. And that is going to blitz up for one minute. You can go further. Whilst that's blitzing, I will show you. Girls, yell out if you can't hear me, but I'm going to um, blitz that and then turn it around and show the rest of the pasta. So we'll get that going. Might be a bit loud.
I decided not to talk then because you probably couldn't have um, heard me. But what I'm doing is just getting all of these and see these oven mats, they are brilliant. So if you're into sustainability, get yourselves one of these or get in contact with your consultant and get one either free or discounted um, by hosting a cooking experience, just like one of these, invite two mates along. And that's helping us showing the thermomix to people and you get to reap the rewards. So look at this guys and just mix it all in. You know, you could put feta on top, you could put some parmesan on top. Um, it is such a quick and easy. And remember you could have had the zoodles if you didn't want it to um, have the carbs in it, but it really is a delicious meal. And if only you could smell that, just that basil, really, really lovely. So look at that. Now, I will show you my immune booster, which I need. So it does say to um, it does say to um, strain it through a fine mesh sieve. I'm just going to do what we did before and use this. So this is what it looks like. I can't wait to have this. We're just going to pop it into our glass, holding this and just straining it there. So we keep anything that's left in there, like bits of lemon and the pips. And then we have, you know, you could even add, I, next time, you know what I'm going to add? A tiny bit of ground um, turmeric in there, just to give it a bit more of a yellow flavour, uh, yellow look, and for the benefits for inflammatory. But look at that. So we know that the ginger is good for gut health and everything else. And let me taste it. Got to taste it on screen. Um, make this. It is beautiful. It's zingy, really lovely. Um, the ginger, I did put extra in there. So it's a bit of a whoop, but beautiful. And I know that's going to be really good for me as well. So be great to make first thing in the morning wake up to and have that it would be absolutely lovely there are so many different smoothies that you can find on cookadoo as well um so have a look just type in um you know drinks do your filters if you're looking for something particular go in find the drinks go from there or you can look for collections so rather than recipes you can go in and look at the collections and you will find then um you know you've got cocktails You've got um, breakfast smoothies. You've got, you know, all that sort of stuff. So cheers. I'm going to enjoy that. And I think we've nearly finished, guys. So I think we're going to go round the room. Um, is everyone ready to present? I think we all yep. are. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we're going to go to Wendy first and show your salad. There we go. So I've put a little bit, of, I've just had a small portion because once you have the dressing on, it just say to eat immediately. And I've wow. just mixed that in a little bit, put some almond flakes and chai seeds on there. Um, you could add some sunflower seeds or pumpkin kernels, um, dried cranberries at the time of serving, just to give it a little bit of an extra nutrition boost. But I'm really looking forward to this. The smell, it's really, it smells lovely. So, so fresh, so healthy and, and so quick. It looks crunchy, just that when you're really yes. enjoying a um, and, fresh salad. And I think I think this is the quickest salad I've ever put together. <laughs> How good is that? All right, and next we're going to, I'm going to bring us over to the lovely Helen. There we go. Thank are. you very much. Ah. Thank you. I Guys, have you have to take photos of all your dishes today, remember, because yeah. they all look so beautiful. Yeah, we will. I've assembled, assembled my bowl. So my couscous is on the bottom. I have apple, avocado, my beetroot, which is really nice and just a little bit of crunch. It's not completely cooked solid, oh, sorry, cooked soft. It's just got a tiny bit of crunch. Um, my sweet potato, broccolini and my chickpeas. And then all we do now is pour my sauce, which is coagulated just a little bit. I'll give it a bit of a stir. You just pour some sauce over the top. As you can see, there's a ton of sauce and 
if you're not a sauce person, you're not going to want to pour too much on. You don't want to drown it. And now I've already put my um, sesame seeds, but it says to put sesame seeds on top, a little bit of parsley and a slice of lime. And that's it. Yum. Can't wait to try it. That looks amazing. I paid 20 bucks for that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for doing that, Helen. Oh, um, that sauce with all the tahini. Oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. I just had a little taste. Oh, good. Excellent. And I think, Chris, we saw yours all done, didn't we? We did. Yeah. All right. So... I'm just going to wind up now and say thank you so much for coming. You've seen that one. Um, if anyone is interested in the Thermomix, the price is um, 2359 With that, you get 24 months um, warranty, which is really, really good. And you get your consultant because we want you to use the machine, you know, the best way you can. And that's why we come with the package and you get everything that you've seen here. Um, so please stay on at the end if you have any queries or questions. Hope we've inspired you once again and we will see you again soon. Thanks, guys. I'm going to stop recording now. Or, Helen, can you?